Welcome everybody to this, our service from St Guthlac's Fishtoft in our coastal cluster in Lincolnshire. We're here on the second Sunday in Lent and we're glad that you can join us. We're pleased also that we have Sue Kitchen with us today who will be preaching for us and reading our gospel and also Helen Moore who is helping with our service as well today. We begin then by listening to our first hymn Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And so we have our prayers of penitence. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our special prayer, our collect for today, the second Sunday of Lent, and we keep silence before we pray. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following in his way, come to share in his glory 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have our first Bible reading. The reading is from Romans 4, verse 13 to the end. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing and the promise is worthless because the law brings wrath and where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom we believed, the God who gives us life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offsprings be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver for unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he promised, had promised. This is written, not for him alone, but also for us, whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Julie. And now Sue Kitchen is going to read our gospel for us and then preach. Thank you, Sue. A reading from the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 8, beginning to read at verse 31. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are set in your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Words from our Gospel reading for the second Sunday of Lent. I don't know whether you've noticed, but there are currently a lot of adverts, both television and magazine inserts, which look like bargains. Some that come to mind are life insurance ads, 
subscribe and you will receive a large gift voucher. But if you read the small print of these adverts, we see that we must make several payments before we receive this gift. These adverts hope that we take them up before we read the small print, or that they have convinced us enough to commit that small print is not so important. Today's reading shows Jesus would never do that to us. He is always completely open and honest. He gives us both the good news and bad news, gently but firmly, because of his love and respect for us. Jesus tells the disciples that he is asking them the ultimate price, and for them to understand what he means, he uses a visual aid. He tells the disciples that they may take up their cross if they want to follow him. Now, when this gospel was written, a cross wasn't just a symbol of pain and suffering. It was mainly a symbol of death. They were tempted to deny Jesus Christ to save their lives. Peter, who really understood who Jesus was, as shown in his confession in the previous verses, you are the Messiah, found what Jesus was saying impossible to comprehend or accept. We're not told what Peter said. It just says in verse 32, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Now Jesus and Peter are an example of how open disagreement can lead to a place of understanding one another and God's way better. Jesus is trying to teach the disciples that the kind of Messiah that they have in mind isn't quite right. They still seem to think that Jesus is going to be powerful and conquer the world. Jesus wants to show them that he's going to appear to do the opposite. He will be rejected, suffer and die. Now Jesus seems to create an atmosphere among his friends where they weren't afraid. Peter is quite confident in his contradiction of Jesus. And Jesus is comfortable to disagree with Peter very strongly. But is Peter kicked out of the group? Is Peter rejected? Far from it. In fact, in just a few verses further in the chapter 9, we hear that Jesus chooses Peter with James and John for a special experience. Our words today show that there is a threefold standard for discipleship. We are to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. Jesus does not call us to deny that we are valuable to God. We are God's children, created in God's image. He is asking us to set aside our interests to discover God. To take up our cross today means we need to put to death our own plans and desires and turn our lives over to God and do his will daily. As Christians, we must put aside selfishness, self-importance and self-centeredness. These things might bring us along, pretend to bring us along the road to happiness, but they are destructive. And Jesus tried to free us from things which destroy us. Peter wanted to change the direction of Jesus' life. He didn't understand that taking up the path of the cross is empowering and liberating. He looked at things from a human view, not God's perspective. The teachings of Jesus were about the task of showing his disciple, the crowd, and us, the idea that we must think of others first and ourselves second. This is a willingness to give ourselves to love to others. We know this to be true. We do it perhaps most naturally as parents, sacrificing all kinds of things in the hope of providing for our children. But we also do it as children, friends, partners, neighbours and more. And each time we do, we call into question a memory want of our own to satisfy a genuine need of someone else. 
We experience the joy of doing what Jesus asks of us. A lot in our culture is designed to make us think that the only thing that matters is looking out for ourselves. This is particularly true in the world of advertising, where a lot of time, energy, creativity and money is poured into adverts that try to make us feel inadequate and encourage us to buy products that promise to make us feel better about ourselves. These commercials are not true. Yes, there are a lot of great things to buy and enjoy, but none of them will make us feel complete, more adequate, or more accepted or love. The Gospel is saying, the more we give, the more we receive. In our reading we heard from Romans, Paul's message is that while we may not always understand the way of God, he will always remain trustworthy and that in God all things will be fulfilled. Despite the disciples' objections, Jesus will not be deterred. He continues the path of sacrificial love and continues to love his disciples even when they misunderstand him or choose not to follow the path until the very end. We need to be reminded daily about sacrificial love. I think we've experienced a lot of this during the COVID-19 pandemic where we have seen people volunteering to help at vaccination centres, undertaking shopping, delivering prescriptions, people taking time to listen to someone in need, the devotion of all the NHS staff, including all ancillary staff, care home staff, teachers, supermarket staff, and many more. Lent is a time to explore our relationship with God but it's also a time to relax in him, secure in our faith, and to let God reveal the unexpected to us. Many people give something up for Lent, chocolate, biscuits, alcohol, and others take something on reading a book or spending a few more minutes in prayer every day. Important as these acts are, it's equally important that these Lenten practices and how well we're doing with them, do not become a focus in themselves. Their real purpose is so that we can better discipline ourselves to listen to God, a God who keeps his promises to us, even if, like Abraham and the disciples, we find that it can be hard to believe at times. In prayer we say, Lord, make us worthy of our calling, that we may serve you in love and peace. May we take up our cross and follow you. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Now we come to our creed, so let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
Let us spend time to pray to God in faith, allowing our hearts to be open to his word. Enable us, Lord, to see the signs that your kingdom surrounds us and let us rejoice in that knowledge. Lord God, guide the leaders of this world to enable them to make the right decisions. Give them wisdom to ensure they place this earth and its inhabitants over power and money. Give them the courage to be honest, the will to be just, the greatness to be humble and the openness to learn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, give hope and resilience, not only to Christians in our diocese, but those throughout this country and the world. We pray for all clergy and lay ministers on every continent. May they be beacons of hope and nurture the spiritual lives of all they meet. Let us also hold in our prayers all those who are persecuted for their faith. Give them hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give thank for the jo thanks for the joy of friendship for all those who share our daily lives and all those we are missed during this time of lockdown. Family and friends who are shielding, all those who live far away from us and were unable to visit. We look forward to being together again. Thank you, Lord, for keeping them safe and giving us all the strength to get through this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, our lives are full of demands of our time. Home, family and the expectation of others are all vying for our attention. Allow us, Lord, this time of Lent to find the space to be with you in our busy lives. Let us find the time to pray and to find peace and to strengthen our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for all those who are ill at home or in hospital, for all those enveloped in grief, worried for the future <clears throat> or totally exhausted. Lord, bring them peace, tranquility and hope. And let us spend a few moments in quiet prayer remembering all those known to ourselves who are suffering in body, mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the dying. Lead them, Lord, safely through their last journey to the peace and joy of eternal life. Let us pray for all those who have died and now live in the full light of Christ and have everlasting life in heaven and bring comfort to all those that love and care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, fill our hearts with thankfulness and joy and help us to keep our faith strong and everlasting. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So now let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
God of wisdom, may the light of your eternal word, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, lead us in holiness and guide us to glory. We ask this in his name. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for your holy people. And now we give you thanks because you give us the spirit of discipline that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace. As we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed, Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Lord, you are holy indeed the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours almighty Father forever and ever. Amen. Behold God's love for you. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Behold, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. If you would like to receive spiritual communion today, please do follow the words on the screen at this point. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I humbly pray that you may enter spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. What has passed our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart, 
that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Amen. Amen. Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we have our last hymn today, At the Name of Jesus. I'd like to say thank you to all of you for joining us on our online service today, the second Sunday in Lent. Thank you as well to Sue Kitchen for preaching for us and reading our gospel and to Helen for helping lead our service today and to everybody else who's been involved in producing this service. Thank you all very much. And so a final blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to, to God. God.